Hello again, my name's Diane and I design and make patchwork quilts. This is the Thursday quilt. Thursday's child has far to go. And if you're interested in seeing how I made this seagull quilt, please continue watching. Here we go again, a nice blank page and I'm ready to start the design for Thursday's child. So the inspiration for this quilt I've taken from a painting that's hanging on my dining room wall. So I'll get that down and show you. Well I've taken the painting off the wall to try and give you a better look. You can see the seagull shape, there's a seagull just there and then this is all light reflecting off the water and different blues. So that's what I'd like to try and recreate in a quilt if I can. So it should be quite a quick quilt to make. It's a traditional block, ocean waves, and the way that I'm going to put it together is in two eight patches. So we've got a little pinwheel, which I've called A, and then this block, which gives the movement, which is B. So I had a little sketch to try and make a seagull. I've never pieced anything really together. It should be doable. I'm thinking perhaps a little bit of gray. This is going to be white and maybe some grey shadows. And try and keep these blocks quite simple. And then the layout, if I can pull that off, so I better make that first before I do the rest of the quilt. I'll have a seagull here, like the painting, and then a big open expanse of sea, all different blues, and perhaps some light reflecting off the top of the water. And I'm thinking a monochromatic scrap buster but I'm, I'm not going to buy anything for this apart from the batting and I'll show you my fabric. So when I have leftover fabrics if it's a lot less than a fat quarter I tend to cut them into four and three quarter inch squares and store them and I've got quite a lot of blues and purples here. That would be the C and I have some of this grunge white and there's the same in the grey so I could put some grey shadows on the seagull and then I have a lot of this teal so I think there's enough contrast with this teal and the blues for the monochromatic quilt. What I would shade some of the blocks in around the seagull just to see the way it lies and I don't really want too much of a contrast between the solid, the teal and the blues because you know I want the emphasis to be on the seagull so these areas here, these large blocks I'm going to reduce. Well I've reduced the area in the centre of that square but I think I'm going to take it down even further. There's been a big change since I last took out those centres of the teal squares. At first glance I really liked it and then I could see these parallelograms here and here. And in, an, in another quilt that might be really effective but I thought it was too distracting from the seagull. And so what my next plan was, was just to do this block here, just the pinwheel. So I had a little play and laying them next to each other, a parallelogram issue has been taken out and you've got these repeating pinwheels in the corners. So I think that'll be quite subtle. I think that's where I'm going to go. So for my first step, I'm going to snowball these corners on this white square with the teal background and hopefully that will give me some shape for the seagull's top of his back. So now I'm going to cut diagonally through those blue corners and I'm hoping there's just enough just to give the rounded shape. The piece I was aiming to cut is that part there which is here and I'm going to call that a result. I think that's going to look good and I've got these little bits left over. <laughs> Next part. Now I'm looking at piecing this uh, wing tip so I know that from there to there is five and a half inches so I've just got to try and get that angle right. So I've just scored from three inches down to the point with my nail and I'm going to try and insert the blue and see what happens. 
that worked. So I've got to do the same for the other side. Then there's three half square triangles there and I've got to figure out this way of connecting it to the body. But that's that tip. Very elegant. I'll do the reverse one for the other side and then figure out the next part. So now to bring the wings into the body, I'm looking to create another wedge, the same as I created for the wing tip. And then as it touches the body, to put another triangle of white for the bird's main body, cutting across. So if I have another wedge like we had, and then just take that corner off there, so it'll still be five and a half by three, but there'll be a little piece missing and that will then starve the bird's body. Okay, try that. So that's that piece now complete and I need to do one for the other side. This is going to be very interesting when I try to put this all together. So I think that could be taken for a seagull. Uh, the tail now, just going to add a little bit of grey, I think, to this bottom square just to give the tail a little bit of uh, definition. Well, I think that tail feather's worked. Now I just need to bring the body in a little bit, shape that in, perhaps another little bit of a feather there. So I'm going to get a blue piece and start taking corners off with white. So last job of the day is to finish this tail and these pieces were left over from the head when I cut those half square triangles out. So I'm going to cut those out at one and a half inches and then I'll put a blue rectangle down by the side so that forms a three inch square. So that gives the tail a little bit of definition. And that's my seagull, ready to be pieced, ready to be flying over an ocean. So now I'm going to start putting the blocks together. Technically speaking, I can't really call this a monochromatic quilt because, as you can see, I have a purple and a teal and they don't fall within the rules of uh, monochrome quilts. They should be one colour with only uh, white or black added to darken or lighter the shade. So it's a monochromatic-ish quilt. Can I get away with that, do you think? So I've started working on these pinwheel blocks, 4x4, four four, and before I show you them, I just need to show you some colours. We have this block that I'm calling purple, this one is blue-purple, and this one is blue-blue. And that's because, as you can see in the blocks, I've arranged them in patterns. So we've got the purple is the pinwheel and the cornerstones, which will form another pinwheel with its neighbouring blocks. We have purple blue on the sides and then blue blue in the top. And that is making my life much easier now to piece together the bird. So there's the main part of the bird body and I've just started putting the edges around to match. So I'll sew that one together and then we'll move to the edge and put the wing tips in. And there's our lovely seagull flying across the ocean. Thursday's child has far to go, so he needs to have a decent sized ocean in front of him or her. So I'm just going to piece these corner parts of the wing and then I'll continue and make as many blocks as I can. Remember I'm scrap busting, so it's limited and we'll see how far this seagull has to fly. There's a seagull, he's encased in an ocean and I'm just going to take it as far as I can with the fabric I have and that's my day planned. I'll get back to you when it's finished. As you can see I have uh, quilted it, it's completely finished quilting and edged apart from the seagull. Now I've quilted up to everywhere so I want to put some stitching inside the seagull and my idea is to take a line of stitching straight up to the top of the head, follow the bird around the outside all the way, get back to that side, do the same there following the edge, oops, there 
and then perhaps go again. Well, I'm so pleased I attempted that. Look at the lovely bird shape on the back of the quilt. Really pretty. I'll show you the front. There we go, that's the front detail. So quite simple. I think it just adds a little bit to the bird. Okay, I'm going to take some photos now. And that's a sneaky back shot. You can just make out the bird. Might also be able to make out the birds feeding in the bird station. And here it is finished. Thursday's child has far to go. A lovely little scrap buster. It's ended up 53 inches square, so it's a perfect size for a picnic blanket. I think it would look lovely at a seaside setting on the beach somewhere. It's lovely and soft. I washed the teal fabric before I started because of the deep colour to avoid colour run. So it's really soft. And thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And if you're interested in watching the next one, it is Tuesday's child is full of grace. Whoops, the wind's picking up. And if you're at all familiar with Margaret Atwood's writings, alias Grace, you'll have an idea where I'm going with the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.